So welcome to video five in the AMT1774 UAV Nano uh, setup guide. So this video deals with the PC application which will allow you to set up all the parameters of the 1774. So in your folder, uh, you must be used to this, you will find Mercury Control and that's the program we want to open. So move that there. So in this uh, interface, there's quite a lot going on, but um, let me just break it down. So this green area here is mainly to do with the network uh, settings and the forward error correction uh, settings. Uh, we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, down the bottom here, you'll have some messages that will appear when the device or the application is doing certain things. Uh, these two blocks here are the two streams that the encoder can generate. So stream 11 and stream 12. Stream 11 is on the left hand side of the board as you see it in the top right hand corner and stream 12 is on the right. So uh, as you can see we have HDMI and analog connected but I'll discuss that in more detail. Then here we have more information about the interface, the streaming methods, um, auto detection of the input uh, resolutions and so on and then up here we've got four buttons read save config so these are pretty obvious to read the config it's going to pull the config out of the board and show you what's pre-programmed already if you want to change things and then save that config that will save it to the board and then here we start and stop the actual streaming uh, manually you can auto start the stream here and then along the top we have the main toolbar so under file you can actually find things like the firmware version um, and you can control the keep alive functionality yeah so here we as I say we have file um, then it, the interface is where we set up whether we're going to be using serial or ethernet. Ethernet is UDP, uh, RS-232 is serial. Um, connection is, is basically a command, there's no actual menu there. Um, test, here we can test certain things. And then in the config, you can actually configure the board itself um, and other functionality, if you can see here. Then these are, again, uh, they're not menus as such, they're actually start and stop buttons. So RTP 11, RTP 12, start and stop, and UDP RS. So let's just start from the basics. So when you open this up for the first time, the very, very first thing you have to do is decide what interface you're going to use. For this example, I'm going to use UDP because it's the Ethernet and the, the easiest to connect to. So you click on that and you will find a configuration menu opens up. The first thing it asks you, what is the fixed IP of your computer? So you put that in there. And then it also asks you, what's the IP address of the, uh, the UAV Nano, which, as I said earlier, on by default is 0 0.245. But if you don't know what it is, you find that using the IP finder tool. You don't change the ports for now, and then save that. So we've configured the interface. The next step is to connect using that interface. So we tick the UDP box and click connect. Now what's happening down here in this area is it's gone off and connected to the board and it's saying ready. With this application, always make sure you see connected and ready before you move to the next, um, the next function because it's sort of a serial process, if you like. So one command, wait. As soon as you see ready, do the next command, click, wait, and so on and so forth. So anyway, we've connected, but there's nothing much filled in here. So the next step is to read the config from the board. So we're going to do that by clicking read config. And this is now filled in pretty much most of what's here. You can manually set all these things. Uh, if there is no config in the board. Um, the, the one thing that you will always have to do is make sure that you've got some sort of sensor connected. 
Well, the way to do that is to go into configuration board and choose your configuration here. Now, you can, you can do that this way, or what you can do is click assembly auto detect and it will go away and actually look and find what's physically connected to the board. So it's telling me that I've got an HDMI on the channel 11 and an analog on the channel 12. So we're good to go with that. Sometimes you'll see no sensor appeared here, appear here like that. If that happens, what you first need to do is pick one of these. Doesn't matter which one you pick. Um, I'm going to pick NTSC because I don't, obviously I don't know what's connected. And then you're going to click IAD because that's then going to auto detect what is actually physically connected to the board. waiting for it to connect so let's click IAD and here you can see it's come back with HDMI 1080p 30 and analog PAL 576p so we know that those are the two input formats and all of these functions here are to do with the streaming the bit rate and the frame rate things like that obviously the encoder format needs to be chosen I'm going to disable record and then I'm going to save that config Ooh. So this is thrown up a bit of an error, which is good. It allows me to show you what the problem is. So the first problem is this is a 50 field per second input and the streaming has been set to 60. Well, clearly we can't do that. So we're gonna change that to 25 frames per second, which is 50 fields. And this one I'm gonna to change to 30 frames a second because that's the input frame rate. And then I'm going to save that config we're ready. So that's made sure that we've got all the correct settings here set up. IAD's ticked um, just so that it, it can automatically detect the input in case you change the input dynamically. Right, the next step is, let's move this around a little bit, streaming. So all these functions here can be changed on the fly. Any Anywhere where it says update, you can change on the fly. Um, the way you, uh, so basically when we want to start a stream, we have to physically click the start button and you'll get this green button here and a notification at the bottom that says streaming. You can, all, you can automatically start streaming by clicking on this start. Okay. Now I'm going to stop the stream because at the moment it's selected RTP 11 and 12. I'm going to select RTSP and I'm going to select auto start and I'm going to save that config to the board so that when it boots up next time, it's going to automatically have all these uh, functions started. So I'm going to start the stream. There you go, green button and streaming at the bottom. So we're ready to go to, to decode these two streams. So I'm going to open up VLC player, which is one way of um, move that over there so you can see what's going on. And open up network stream, type in the URL for the RTSP stream, which in this case is 245 port 554 slash channel 11. It can be channel 11 or 12. Click go, uh, video, zoom, Let's go quarter. Okay, so here we've got channel 11 streaming at 200 kilobits per second, 30 frames a second, 30 GOP and 30 frames a second. If I want to change that to 20 uh, kilobits per second, I can do that. I can click update and it automatically changes the bit rate on the fly. And if you look at the codec information, statistics, you'll see that we are uh, content bitrate is about 30 kilobits per second so it's not quite as low as 20 because it's pushing it to get that low and then we can open up a another VLC window and this time we'll open network stream this time we'll do uh, 0.245554/12 and 
this is the PAL camera and again it's running at 200 kilobits you can change that to let's change that to 35 kilobits for example and update that and you'll begin to see there's a bit of smear, sm uh, blocking and uh, smearing of the video uh, it's very difficult to see because there's not much movement let me see if I can move the camera for you can't move the camera it's oh there it is right so there we go you can see it's uh, it's not bad considering that it's 35 kilobits per second uh, for a full 25 frame per second uh, signal so that's VLC player. The other player that we have, which is our low latency player, is called Neptune player. And in Neptune player, you basically open up RTSP, the IP address, the channel, the port, the TCP, and you click play. And that's doing exactly the same thing, except the latency is much lower. Now in here, you've got um, statistics under tools. So you've got the very same, you've got see the bit rate there is 42 26 25 so it's flapping about the 20 to 40 kilobit per second range and then we can open up another network stream this time we're going to choose 11 and play and there's your HDMI signal again running at a very low bit rate which is why you've got this blockiness being shown up Okay, so that's a very quick run through of the PC application. There's a few other things in here that we can uh, talk about. Uh, we're going to be talking about how to set up RTP streaming in a, another video, so I won't go into that now. Um, please remember to start and stop the streams and look out for this green button. Um, IAD, as I say, look for the uh, automatically adjust. Uh, automatically detect the input resolution and, and frame rate. Um, later on, we're going to change RTSP to RTP. So this button actually toggles between different streaming methods. Um, and then oops, I've clicked connect by accident. So it's gone off and reconnecting back to the board. Oh, it's disconnected, sorry. So click again. There we are. So we've got to go through the whole process of reading the config uh, to pull all the information back down from the board, as I've just done. So that's the PC application and how to set up the, the, the Nano to stream two different streams. Um, the other thing I should mention is uh, the recording. So in here, let me see, I can't, let me, sorry, let me reconnect. Because when you're connected, this uh, recording section will basically be filled in. So we just go into configuration recording. And here you can see some of the features are already filled in for you. So actually this board has four streams two for the streaming and two for the recording, and they can all be different. So that's another useful function. And this is recording to the SD card on the actual board, which you can see in the top right-hand corner. Anyway, thank you very much. And uh, as I say, the next video will be on RTP multicast streaming.